This is a follow-up video um, to the first video that I put on YouTube back in July 2011. In that uh, video I was explaining that I was going to build a model railway layout up here in my loft but I had quite a bit of work that I wanted to do in the loft first before I could make a start um, you know putting the baseboards down or what have you. Um, a couple of the things that I wanted to do was um, if we just come across here into the middle section of the loft if you remember on the first video there was a chimney stack here um, which had prevented me from getting the centre section of the uh, the flooring completed. I had done the two far ends um, but I couldn't get the middle bit done because of the chimney stack. Well as you can see the stack's now gone and I've got a window fitted in place. I had said at the time that I was going to maybe fit a Velux window um, which I haven't done. Uh, at the time when I come to get the window, Screwfix was doing quite a good deal on the um, the window and the flashings kit. So I just went ahead and got that one. Um, and a, a roofer friend of mine came and helped to, to fit it all in for me. So I'm over the moon with that. Uh, the other thing that I mentioned on the first video was that we had some roof supports in the loft, which I wanted either removing or at the very least altering to make the loft a lot more walk through than what it was at the time. Uh, if you remember on the video there was a cross section there that you had to step over and the same at each side as well. Uh, there was four of them that you had to step through and un under, you had to step under the top one and over the bottom one to get through to the other end of the loft. Um, and as I say I wanted those removed or altered if possible, you know altered anyway. Uh, but uh, I, I got a, um, a, a joiner friend in from work who um, he does he does a lot of work in lofts and that, uh, and he advised against removing these centre sections here. You can see there where the uh, the plug sockets is fitted, and the other one here where the clock is. He says that really they had to stay in place. But the um, he he was able to alter the sides for me. You can see that they've been reinforced there with plywood. Um, and it's all all screwed together and what have you and also what he's done is he's braced the full length of the roof um, at the at the top of the roof you can't see because of the insulation there but um, that's all been reinforced the full length of the roof and that so that's all done now which I'm pleased about um, and as you can see I've made a start with the baseboards um, it's as I say it's took from t July 2011 right up until just this last week or so for to be able to make a start with the baseboards uh, you know the one thing after another seemed to crop up which prevented me from getting work done in the loft uh, but at last now I can concentrate on the layout instead of you know trying to get work done in the loft the uh, the baseboards eh, um, which which are going down each side they've got them set at about I think they're about 10 inches um, wide I was just going to have them very narrow, just sort of wide enough to take two tracks to go all the way around the layout. I was going to have the two running lines all the way around. But I thought, well, I'll make them a little bit bigger because I've got a couple of ideas in mind which would need wider boards. So I thought, well, I'll just I'll, I'll put them at 10 inches. And, you know, if I if I use the extra space, I do. If I don't, well, I don't. So it's, it's not going to really make much difference. But what I can't get over is since the baseboards has been put in, it seems to have made more room in the loft as as stupid as that sounds i mean all the stuff that's the you know all the stuff that we've got stored in the loft it seemed to take up more of the loft before but now it's all sort of covered in by the baseboards and it's, it's it does it seems to make the loft a lot um a lot bigger um just trying to think what else yeah the uh, the insulation on the first video I was going to get some plasterboards and insulation and I was going to plasterboard the loft out. I decided not to do that. Um, I thought, well, I'm going to try and do this as cheap as possible. Uh, so I just went for the aluminium rolls of insulation, the aluminium foil. And you just staple it to your woodwork and then you just, you know, you just go down all your joints with a silver tape. And I have to say that it's really made a difference to the temperature of the loft. At first, when you first came into the loft before the insulation was added, during the winter time when you were speaking it was that cold it was bitter cold you could see your breath when you were speaking but now you can't see any of that and it's it's really it, it's really quite pleasant in the loft even you know if it's been cold all day when you come up you only seem to feel the cold for a few minutes and then you, you seem to warm up it's really good so I'm, I'm quite pleased that I went down that route as I say it was, it was a fair bit cheaper as well compared to buying plasterboards and uh, the other insulation to go between the rafters and what have you so yeah it's worked out quite well um, a couple of a couple of other things that I've been messing around with, which I'll uh, I'll just come up and have a look at. Um, 
just before I show you those bits and pieces, what I'm going to do is, um, as I said, I'm going to build a layout of the uh, the West Blythe area, and I'm hoping if I can get it to work out properly that the um, the 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 sheds, the railway, the the logo sheds is going to be up here, and as we come down here, the um, the states upper and lower reception yards is going to be in this this sort of section on the on the left hand side of this beam here so it's going to occupy this area and then a little bit further down there down towards the uh, down towards where the bookcase is there it'll be, it'll be the states area that's the way i've got it sort of planned out in my mind to do it the, the problem is with that to be able to get the um, reception sidings and the states in together as they were at West Blythe, I'm probably only going to be able to run um, about 10 wagons per train, which is a bit of a shame really, I was hoping to go for about 20 or something like that, but I think probably 10 is going to be about the most I can get away with, simply because if they're any longer, the it's going to reduce the length of the states, whereas if I, if I can keep the trains to about 10, 10 wagons long, at least I'm going to be able to have decent reception sidings, upper and lower, and... Um, the states should still be a good length as well because I didn't want them looking too short because I think that would look ridiculous and it would it would sp totally spoil the effect of the uh, of the layout. Now, if we come across to the other side, what I'm planning on doing here is um, on the right hand side of this support here, I'm hoping to build a colliery. Um, now, I've got all the um, a while ago I bought the the Backman Scene Craft colliery um, buildings where you got you got everything in the kit um, all the buildings that you needed for the colliery um, and I've got a track diagram of Linemouth colliery which was just it was just a few mile um, away from the West Blythe area as I say I've got a track diagram of that so I would like to maybe build a colliery loosely based on uh, the, the Linemouth colliery um, now what I'm going to do with that is, I'm hoping anyway, uh, as I say I've still got all this in my mind at the moment, I'm hoping to start the colliery coming away from about this leg here, um, and that'll go down down towards the gable end wall there, and, and probably stop about a foot away from the uh, from the, the section that goes across there, so I can get a good size, um, a good size colliery in. Uh, as I say, I've got the track plan of Linemouth, which shows the uh, you know exchange sidings and the uh, arrival and departure roads and uh, what have you. So the uh, it shows the screens on the way the uh, the tracks laid out for the screens and the washery. I, I, I'm not even sure if there was a washery there, to be honest with you. Um, but uh, anyway, what I wanted to show you before was um, it's just something I've been messing around with in between jobs in the loft. The the backman. Scene craft uh, head frame uh, that that came with the colliery set. I didn't really care much for that. Um, it was sort of like a, 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 a tin plate type thing. So I thought, well, I'll have a go at making a, a better one. Um, so I got some of the evergreen profiles, you know, the I beams and H beams and C beams and what have you. And I thought, well, I'll have a go at making a one. So I took the wheels off the uh, the backman one as it came uh, supplied i took the wheels off and i thought well i'll just put them on there the only thing that uh, maybe i need to do with this is to increase the size of it it's currently standing at about 13 inches from the ground there up to the top of the uh, up to the top of the flagpole there so i don't know if maybe that needs to be a little bit higher um i got this um the new river mining company from walthas the walthas cornerstone kit um, to add to to use for the screens um, at the colliery. Uh, so I mean, looking looking at the two, I'm not sure whether it needs to be a little bit higher. It it is higher than what the screens will be. I might make it a little bit higher. Um, and I've got the building to make that that's going to go around the bottom of this, the uh, the pit head building, um, which I think I'll make out of foam board. I'll, I've got um, the cutters for using with foam board. I'll get some three mil foam board. And I'll make the uh, the pit head building that the uh, the um, this head frame will go through. Hopefully, that's the plan anyway. Uh, just to get back to this anyway, when I got this kit, um, I did did a little bit of research on sort of like washeries. I've got some colliery books and colliery photos, um, and 
I, I decided I was going to build uh, what I thought to do at first was I was going to get some foam board and I was going to make my own screens um, and I was having a look in some books and that and I thought I wasn't really sure whether I was going to be able to do that or not so I thought well I'll buy this new river mining uh, company kit and just use that I'll make a few modifications to it uh, and just use that what I noticed was on the uh, the picture I didn't really like this high bit here most of the colliery screens that I've looked at um, they're not really I don't think they were as high as what this building would be so I was having a look online and there was a guy um, American railroader guy model railroader in America had converted one of these kits to be able to leave that top section off um, so I, it, it, that was like step by steps how we had done it so what I thought was I'll have a go with mine and what I've done is I've al al altered the shape of the roof there so I can put the roof panels on and it'll, it'll just sort of keep it at that height which I'm really pleased with the way it's turned out um, it's it, actually something's gone right for a change um, I haven't put the roof sections on yet I want to get some lights in there um, and I haven't put the windows in yet obviously uh, so they need to go in as well and there's some um, there's some steps for to go on on here with some handrails um, which are ready made uh, the ones that I had to do for the uh, for the head frame here I had to make these each each step by hand and put the handrails on and that but uh, I don't think it's come out too bad I might paint the handrails white and then rust them the same with the um, the fencing around the top there, I don't know, I'll, I'll have to see what happens with that. Um, but I think that's pretty much all I can show you at the moment. Uh, the uh, the levelling of the baseboards, I had a bit of a problem with that. Um, me and my sons uh, give us a hand with this. We sort of started off at this area here and we worked our way around. And as we're getting one section level... The other section was out and then when we get that done it was knocking this section back out and that and we sort of had to go around like just go around the whole thing a couple of times to get it um to try and get it level which i'm pleased to say it, it, it it's i think it, it's as level as i'm going to get it um i don't know if it's my my joinery or the age of the house or both um we sort of had to compromise with that uh I mean, it's it, it it it. I would have to say it, it's it's pretty close. I think we'll probably get away with it the way it is. Um, the other problem that I had, well, not a major problem, but a little bit of a problem, which you might want to bear in mind, anybody who's going to start a layout, was the cutting of the. Um, I got nine mil plywood for the um, for the baseboards, and I had a problem cutting that. I used a jigsaw to cut the plywood strips and even with the guide on the jigsaw I still found it virtually impossible to get a nice straight line um, everything was marked up nice and straight and then when I cut it with the plywood it was it was it was just wasn't straight I probably could have done a better job if I'd used a knife and fork to be honest with you um, so I don't know whether a circular saw would have been better but I mean it, it, it jigsaw is all I've got so that's I mean it, it doesn't look too bad I mean it's not really um, it's not really untidy, you know, you, you cannot really tell. You've got to look sort of close at it, so it'll probably be okay. And I'll just carry on using the jigsaw um, for to cut the rest of it when I come to do the colliery in the States area. Um, the colliery, I'm probably going to make a start with that maybe um, either this weekend or possibly next week. That's going to be quite a large, large section for to put in. Probably have to make it in two sections and then attach it to this uh, this side section here i'm not 100 percent sure about that i need to have a bit more think about that at the moment um i think the states the the uh, the logo sheds and the uh, reception sidings upper and lower and the states is going to be a little bit easier to do um i'm going to get the timber soon for to do the states uh i plan on using 10 millimeter square dowel for that i think that should look pretty much okay um and probably something along the size of matchsticks maybe maybe a little bit smaller for to do the uh, the fencing along the top of the states but um i'll see as i get a bit closer to getting that get, making a start without what i'm going to use um but uh, i think that's pretty much all i can show you for now um i'm really pleased with the way this has turned out as i say it's taken from 2011 from that very first video in 2011 july 2011 right up until just this last week i took a week's holiday from work got the timber that i needed to make a start with that to make a start with the baseboards and that and as i say it's it's taken from then till now 
just to get to this stage. It was always sort of doing jobs on the loft. It was, you know, one thing after another with the loft. But now, you know, I'm really happy to say that it's it, it's layout time now. The loft's done. Um, I mean, there's a couple of other things that I could actually do. Um, I, I'm still might paint the gable end walls there uh, white, um, which will, you know, reflect the light a little bit better. I don't know, I'll have to wait and see what happens with that. I may just leave it as it is, to be honest with you, because now that I've started with the layout, I want to just carry on with that and get as much done as I can. Um, you know, rather than still sort of messing on, doing jobs in the loft and that. But, uh, as I say, I think that's about it. Um, I'll do, you know, I'll not, I'll not wait three years before I do another update video. Anything that I do, even if it's just something small, I'll do a video of it and let you let you see how it's going. And it's, you know, it might, if you're thinking of building a layout yourselves, it might spur you on to, you know, to get cracking with it and that, and uh, you know, make a few things and that. But uh, if anybody's got any advice or help or suggestions or anything like that, you can, you can leave a comment or you can send us a message. Um, or if there's anything that you'd like to see, um, I'll do my best to try and shoot. But uh, thanks for watching anyway, and I'll speak to you soon. Cheers. Bye. <laughs>